What's good YouTube? It's your boy Leo coming to you guys with yet another video coming to you guys today with another reaction. Today we're checking out 10 worst WWE matches of 2023. 2023 is where we start to see um, WWE um, transition into the um, partnership that they have currently um, and everything like that. So we were seeing things starting to change in the WWE and the landscape and what we were being presented from booking to new stars being introduced or former stars being reintroduced and stuff like that but on top of that we did see um things change and but we still got some bad matches one that comes to the top man was uh john cena versus austin theory um somebody that i actually people don't really like that much but i do personally and I thought it was a dream match, but I just don't think it really hit the way people thought it would be. So, it just did It felt flat for me. Uh, but we're going to see what Kultalik deems worst WWE matches of 2023. So, let's get into it. Three saw some big changes to the WWE landscape, not least because it joined up with UFC in an unholy union of punches, kicks, and tiny little shorts. The bloodline fell apart, sort of. Cody Rhodes achieved his dreams, kind of. And there was some damn fine wrestling across the board, mostly. But who are we kidding? We know you're not interested in any of that. You are here for the matches that were disappointing, deflating, or downright disastrous. So feast your eyes on these clunkers, you negative bunch of bastards. I'm Adam Pacitti from Cultaholic Wrestling, and these are the 10 worst WWE matches of 2023. Join us. Number 10, Rhea Ripley versus Natalya at Night of Champions. Yeah, this is pretty much just a squash match. And I think it was Natalya's birthday on top of that, which didn't make things even, made things even worse for her. It didn't make it better, it made it worse. This was just a glorified squash match. They just wanted them in and out, pretty much. WWE's first Saudi show of the year saw the return of a beloved brand name in Night of Champions. This show featured bangers like Cody Rhodes vs Brock Lesnar, Seth Rollins beating AJ Styles for the new World Heavyweight Championship, and Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn overcoming the combined force of Solo Sokoa and Roman Reigns. Also, Natalya had a match. Wait a second, did she? I don't remember that. Oh yeah, that's right, WWE flew both her and Rhea Ripley all the way out to the Middle East for just over a minute's worth of work. After Dominic Mysterio ran interference before the bell, Ripley jumped her opponent, chucked her about for a while, then hit a headbutt on a riptide to retain the SmackDown Women's Championship. Honestly, this would have actually been better as a straight squash without the interference. I'm all for making Rhea look good, as if she needs any help there, and Dominic's involvement made it look a bit more fluky than it perhaps should have. Fans were hoping for a little bit more out of these two and were a tad disappointed when this was all they got. And if that wasn't bad enough, this humiliation took place on Natty's birthday. Number 9, Gunter vs Matt Riddle at Money in the Bank. Pretty on paper, this match between Gunther and Matt Riddle had the opportunity to be really something special because we know uh, Gunther's background and what he's done as a wrestler. And we know uh, Matt Riddle's background as a wrestler and UFC performer as well. So putting these two in the ring could have been made for something truly special. Unfortunately, this is one of those situations where it fell flat, in my personal opinion. So, um, But I think they were did okay. It wasn't the best, but it wasn't the worst either. It was just not really that compelling. British wrestling fans had it pretty good in 2023 as several major feds from across the pond brought their shows over to our fair shores. AEW had All In at Wembley, TNA had Turning Point featuring our very own Tom Campbell as ring announcer, and for the WWE diehards there was money in the bank. As well as the two ladder matches and a mouth-watering Bloodline Civil War main event, this show was home to a match that would have sold out any independent wrestling event in the country circa 2018. Gunter was putting his Intercontinental Championship on the line against Matt Riddle, the first ever one-on-one -on -one encounter between these two talented performers in WWE. However, whether it was jet lag, overhyped expectations, or just both men having an off day, the bout underdelivered. It was perfectly serviceable, but considering the stock of the men involved, plus the fact that they both cut their teeth partly in the UK, this simply wasn't good enough. Never mind, eh? Maybe they'll have a great rematch at some point down the lo- oh, on second thoughts, they probably won't. Number 8, Roman Reigns vs Jey Uso at SummerSlam. This 
I think out of their entire feud between Roman and Jay, this is the worst match. The match that they had at Clash of the Castle was really good. The match that they had, um, Helm of Silva year was really, really good. And then you fast forward, Jay was the one to dethrone or will, p will pin Roman Reigns after three years. So that was a huge deal and gave him a huge right of momentum going into SummerSlam. And a lot of people could have made the argument that Jay could have been the one to dethrone Roman with it being tribal combat. But they kind of went against their rules, which I didn't like. The fact that tribal combat was supposed to be just Roman and Jay. Nobody else should be getting involved. And yet you had um, Solus get involved and then you had Jimmy get involved. And Jimmy turned on Jay for... Pretty much no reason. I know they kind of explained it, but it still made for no reason whatsoever. Like, Jimmy pretty much saying, I didn't want you to be like Roman. I don't want you to be corrupted by the power and stuff like that. That was a kind of a lame excuse in my personal opinion. But um, this is like the weakest of the feud. I don't think that they, I feel like they might run this back in the future. We will see. They're kind of, I know last uh, night on Raw, J Jimmy uh, came. And tried to speak to Jay, but Jay really wasn't having it. So this could be the beginning of the tease that we're going to be seeing of potentially trying to get Jay back into the fold of things as far as being part of this bloodline storyline going into Survivor Series, which is about, I want to say, three, four weeks away. So they don't really have a lot of time. They have to get the ball rolling on that for sure. <laughs> At the aforementioned Money in the Bank, Jey Uso finally scored a measure of revenge over his table-heading cousin when he became the first person to pin Roman Reigns since 2019. This set the stage for a blockbuster SummerSlam main event, Roman vs Jey for the big one but now with even more history and emotional weight behind it. WWE couldn't lose until they did. The match, which was labelled Tribal Combat but was basically just a standard no DQ, was alright if a little tame, but it was the conclusion that condemned it. Jay looked to have the match won when a man in a hoodie broke things up. The mysterious invader then revealed himself to be… Jimmy Uso. The same Jimmy Uso who had been out of action for weeks following a brutal beatdown from the bloodline. That Jimmy Uso. It made no sense at the time and it still doesn't make a great deal more in hindsight. The whole thing stank of swerve for swerve's sake and the bloodline haven't been quite the same since. Number 7. Austin Theory vs John Cena at WrestleMania 39 Night 1 On the whole, WrestleMania 39 This match could have been really good. This could have been a true pass of the torch moment for Austin Theory and we know John Cena um, it's been capable of putting on good matches. Um, but I think maybe it's, it's one of those things where age is starting to catch up to him. So he's not able to kind of go like he once was and stuff like that. So I know he's not really there a lot of times. So the in-ring rust could probably be setting in as well. So I'll give a pass on it, but I think this could have been a way better match. It was a great old time with some people ranking it amongst their favourite manias ever. Unfortunately, nothing is perfect, not even WrestleMania, as this misfire of an opening match proved. Austin Theory had won some big matches as United States Champion, but hadn't quite had that killer program to take him to the next level. Enter John Cena, who had come from the set of the Barbie movie just to give little Austin the rub. And what happened? Cena absolutely buried Theory in the build-up to Mania, chewing him out on television for not being a very good champion. He eviscerated the poor boy, but surely this was all leading to a show-stealing match on the big night, right? Instead, Cena and Theory wrestled a remarkably dull affair with Cena putting in as much effort as I do when I'm stacking the dishwasher. Theory won, which was all well and good, but the preceding encounter was so thunderingly boring that what should have been a stepping stone became a giant boulder around his neck. And yes, he still held on to the US title for another four months. What a drag. Number 6. Gable Steveson vs Baron Corbin at NXT The Great Am- I'm not gonna lie to you. This, not even was this the worst match that I've seen in NXT. This is the worst match I've seen in WWE, period. And I'm pretty sure there's gonna probably be some more that I probably aren't gonna come to mind. Maybe you guys would probably let me know in the comment section down below. But this right here was the worst match I have ever seen. This was just god-awful. American Bash. 
It's always tricky to decide whether or not to include NXT on these things, as it can feel like its own separate entity a lot of the time, but we simply had to include a match that was so painful, one half of it hasn't appeared since. Despite signing for the company in 2021, it took until July 2023 for Olympic gold medalist Gable Steveson to make his in-ring debut. His opponent was Burn the Ship, sorry, I mean Baron Corbin, who is a good hand, but maybe not the most exciting first opponent for a new talent. The pair proceeded to have a very, very, very tedious match in which Corbin dominated most of the action. Stevenson showed brief glimmers of promise, but the layout was such that the chances he had to impress were few and far between. Two other factors severely hampered young Gable's first outing. One was the crowd, who decided that they were going to cheer for the heel instead, and the other was the baffling decision to end this match in a double countout. If there had been a gold medal for bad first impressions, Stevenson would have added that to his collection too. Number 5. Shayna Baszler vs. Ronda Rousey at SummerSlam A dream match for many, it was a dream match for me, but this match was god awful. This was atrocious. This, this was a match a lot of people wanted to see for so long, especially going back all the way to Shayna Baszler being in NXT. People were clamoring to see this potentially at some point, and it didn't work. The match, people, this was a match people, like I said, wanted to see, but when you look at SummerSlam, you had people walking out. What are we doing? Um. When Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler won the Women's Tag Team Championships in May, they promised to shake things up and bring some respect and prestige to the floundering titles. So did they? Well, what do you think? 33 days later, the duo lost the belts when Baszler turned on Rousey completely out of the blue. It was later explained that she was jealous of her friend, setting up what was being dubbed an MMA rules match at SummerSlam. MMA? This match was more DOA. The two women traded worked shoot-style punches, kicks, and submission holds for seven and a half minutes before Baszler got the win. This sort of thing has never gone down well with audiences who, shockingly, want to see pro wrestling, not a pretend version of UFC. There was little flow to this contest and zero moments that deserved any sort of big pop. I mean, at least the fight pit has a big metal box to play with and sell toys of. This had none of that. And by the way, Shayna got absolutely nout off the back of the biggest win of her career. So there's that too. Number 4. Bobby Lashley vs Brock Lesnar at Elimination Chamber Considering how- It's crazy that in the last, I think, in one of my previous videos that I did, the last time an uh, African-American um, won a singles match on pay-per-view was Bobby Lashley and Brock when he faced Brock Lesnar. That was the last time we had an African-American have a singles match on the male side of things, of course, and it was 2023. How long wrestling fans had been dreaming about a Brock Lesnar-Bobby Lashley program, it is staggering that WWE have managed to cock it up on not one, but two occasions. Following their bizarre mini-feud at the start of 2022, these two behemoths clashed again at Crown Jewel in November in the 2023 Royal Rumble match, and then at the following month's Elimination Chamber. This was a chance for these two freaks of nature, these two athletic powerhouses that had been compared to each other for years, to finally let loose. A chance not taken, sadly. Both BLs spammed their finishes on each other, but not in a Brock vs Goldberg from WrestleMania 33 way, more of a two eight-year-olds playing 2K way. To top this mess off, it ended when Lesnar couldn't get out of the hurt lock, so just kicked Lashley in the ghoulies instead. Nice one. Had this led to another, better match at the Showcase of the Immortals, then it may have been forgiven, but Lesnar decided he wanted to work with Omos instead, and that was that. Number 3. Pat McAfee vs The Miz at WrestleMania 39 Night and I get what they were trying to do. We wanted Pat McAfee to be on the show. I don't, don't get me wrong. I was happy to see him doing stuff for WrestleMania. But the match wasn't really all that. It was pretty much just him doing a couple moves and then winning. That's pretty much what he was. Night 1 For WrestleMania 39, hosting duties fell to The Miz and rap legend Snoop Dogg, which led to some of the cringiest, most random moments the granddaddy of them all has seen in quite some time. The Dogfather said he wanted to see Miz compete in a match, which brought out a returning Pat McAfee. 
After some typically cowardly protesting from the A-lister, the contest was made official and, well, it was The Miz vs Pat McAfee. What did you expect? The man who is a professional wrestler got the hell beaten out of him by the man who isn't a professional wrestler, leading to McAfee kicking Miz in the face to get the win, but not before falling over whilst hitting his own move. Also, Pat got a huge assist from football player George Kittle, who was sat at ringside and nobody said a word. McAfee cheated. He should have been disqualified and Miz should have won. Is there no justice left in this world? Number two, Bray Wyatt versus LA Knight at Royal Rumble. Of RP Bray Wyatt, but um, the interactions that they were having was really cool. I really did love the interactions they were having leading up to their eventual encounter, but the match itself was not it. I don't know what, what was going on, I don't know what they were missing, but something was definitely missing. Um, I can't really put my finger on it, but the match is just it didn't really hit for me, it, it felt like they were on autopilot i guess i feel like but i wish they could have done more we will see we'll see i um i don't know i really don't know how to feel about the match the match wasn't anything to write home about um but like i said rp bray wyatt um ella knight's current u.s champion so he's doing some good work right now he's doing some good work i will give him that for obvious reasons, this is a very difficult match to talk about now. Wyndham Rotunda, the man behind the Bray Wyatt character, passed away in August after a heart attack following an extended leave of absence from TV. A bout of COVID prior to his death scrapped proposed WrestleMania plans with Bobby Lashley, making his pitch black match with LA Knight at the 2023 Royal Rumble Wyatt's final televised bout. Unfortunately, and there's no easy way to say this, it wasn't very good. First of all, it was heavily sponsored by Mountain Dew, which is never a good sign. Secondly, it took place with all the lights dimmed to show off that Bray had raided a 90s raver house for all their glow-in-the-dark makeup. This made it very hard to take anything here seriously, and the actual wrestling wasn't fantastic either, not to mention the nonsense with Uncle Howdy after the bell, which is honestly such a shame as Bray did not deserve to go out like this. Luckily, Wyatt left his fans so many other wonderful memories, and those are the ones we choose to think about when we think of him. Rest in peace, Wyndham, and thank you. Number one, Shane McMahon slash Snoop Dogg versus The Miz at WrestleMania. Th this wasn't even a match. The fact that they had this segment and then it was supposed to be a match and Shane tore his quad, yeah, that's funny. He tore his quad in them, and I don't think even the match. So. So pretty much what happened, Shane tore his quad when he faced The Miz. Then, instead of calling off the match, Snoop Dogg stepped in and he beat The Miz. It's crazy. 39 Night 2 Anyone who claims WrestleMania 39 was perfect clearly forgot that WWE made us sit through some Miz-centric nonsense not once, but twice. One night removed from the McAfee fiasco, Snoop pulled the same trick again by announcing that Miz had yet another impromptu match. This time it was against… oh no… Shane McMahon. This has to be some sort of sick joke. I mean, it should have been clear that this segment was doomed when Shane O'Mac got out of breath jogging down to the ring, but the bell rang anyway and the match was on, and then very quickly off. Shane threw some of his awful punches, did a drop down and then a leapfrog which blew out his quad and sent him down to the mat, just like his old man 18 years prior. With McMahon out of action after doing a basic move, it fell to 51-year-old rapper Snoop Dogg to improvise. He punched Miz twice and then hit the least electric move in sports entertainment to give himself the win. Serious props to Snoop here, but this was obviously a car wreck from start to finish, and even though it was perversely hilarious, it has to go down as the worst. Yeah, this was the worst match of 2023 in my personal opinion. Um, it's just, like I said, how they led up to the match just was not, wasn't it for me. But comment down below, let me know. What match do you deem worst match of 2023 is on this list? Let me know what it was and why. And if it was on this list, let me know what it, what, what you think should have been on the list and why you think so as well. 
Um, super kick that like button helps my channel gets pushed up across the platform. Superman punch that post notification bell sent every time I post a new video, whether it's a reaction video, rant video, live stream, any type of video. You could be in the loop of things when I do drop a video and spear that subscribe button. It takes three seconds out of your day to do those three things for me. I was on the progression of my channel as well. Um, we're on the road to 350 subscribers, but the ultimate goal is 10K. When I do hit 10K, I will do a giveaway when one of my lucky subscribers will have the opportunity to win a WWE Championship from WWE Shop. So if you want to be a part of that, want to be the potential subscriber that does win that, subscribe to the channel. It's absolutely free. You can always change your mind in the future, but why would you want to do that? I'm trying to give you guys daily, daily wrestling content. The grind does not stop. Hope everybody has a great day, a great rest of your week, and I'll see you guys in the next video.